Hey folks, this is Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, two guys, guys in a ride. ride. And oh my gosh, Nathan, we are here yeah. with some fantastic folks. And today we are at Idle Ridge in uh, right outside of St. Cloud, Minnesota. And we are with Jim and Brenda. And they're gonna share with us some of their fantastic collection of memorabilia, gas pumps. Uh, we've got a cool boat, we've got a terraplane, we've got a Dodge Coronet, we've got a Corvette. And I'd say something, but and Rob I'm not letting stop. him because I'm so excited. <laughs> but folks, it's we, fantastic, you're gonna love it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going on and on because I'm so excited. But just keep watching and I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it. Yes, you uh, will. Take a moment, hit that red subscribe button to subscribe to our channel so you never miss uh, a video and hit that bell notification. And if you like what you see, give us a like, give us a thumbs up and leave some comments down below if you'd like to see more. So what do you say folks? Nathan, let's, let's take a ride. ride. All right. Hey folks, Rob of Two Guys in a Ride, still here today, and I am with Jim, and we are in front of his beautiful 1960 Chevrolet Corvette. Jim, tell us about this car. Well, actually, about 35 years ago, I went down to an auction um, at the um, um, the place in, in Minneapolis, a big auditorium, I don't remember what it was. Okay. And I was drawn down there because I was born in 1955 and I they advertised the 1955 Cadillac Eldorado Brits convertible. And that was what I really was after. Well, we got down there and here the consignee backed out and never brought the car. And so I found this 60 Corvette. It was a pure mint survivor, but unrestored. And so I just fell in love with it because when I was a kid, my dad had a 59 wagon with a 283 in it, mm -hmm. and that was such a cool motor, you just kicked the key and it was running. And I just loved that motor riding in the front seat with my dad. And this had the 283, but this one's rare because it's got the two-speed two cast iron oh. um, 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 power glide. Yeah, yeah, right, the power glide. Right, yep. right. And um, so many of them were straight stick because the kids wanted straight sticks. Right. And um, I don't think the four speed came out till like 63 or 64. They were just three speeds. And so I just fell in love with the car. So I bought the car and I used it for years. And about 15 years ago, then I restored it. Okay. But I restored it back to, again, I'm a purist. So everything down to the BF Goodrich Silvertown bias tire with the two and an eighth inch white wall. And I like them the way they were on the showroom floor. And so it adds for those those bias plies add for an interesting drive over today's modern steel belted tires. You better believe it. <laughs> a little squirmy. They don't feel quite as confident. Well, and then and then when you're when you're going off yeah. and you hit that line and the whole car goes like that. But that's what I love. Right. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want a new one, buy a new one. I want the feel. I want the smell. I want the experience. I want. Um, you know, because it was a little chore to drive a car back in right, the day. Right, right, right. Now they drive themselves with well, automatic cruise control. If you swerve over the lane, it, it, yeah. it scoots you back in the lane. It'll automatically brake for you. Everything. Well, you know, you said, I, the way you kind of tell your story, it sounds like you went after the Cadillac, but you settled for this. But I don't think you settled. I don't think I settled at okay, all. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. And the cool part of it was, is 35 years ago, they were still somewhat affordable. Okay, right. And then of course I spent plenty of money restoring it. Right. But um, now when I watch on these car auctions, um, 60 and under, you know, the round style, mm -hmm. yep. um, 
it's not uncommon for them to bring 80 to 125,000. Yeah. For a car that sold for twenty three hundred, brand new with a warranty. <laughs> right, right, right. But it's a, it's an American icon. Oh, it is. Format. And you've got, I think, the one of the best styled ones. And I was telling you earlier, you've got it in the video. But it, it still had the cove, and it had the alternating color, and it's just and with the chrome trim around the cro the cove, and all the chrome on the the tail lights on the back. It's just so beautifully designed and we've talked about that earlier cars of this era were designed and styled yes they were and they and think of those designers back then yep. and like harley earl yes and the amazing stuff that he did for yep. general motors yep. and it was just so cool but anyway um this car is very often mistaken for a 57 58 or 59 yep. But 60 was actually the last year of the real cool round style. Mm -hmm. And then in 61, they started cutting lines in. Right, right. And I didn't really care for that. So had this had been any newer than a 60, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't have been interested. Okay. And one of the designs I like, it was said to have been inspired from, by Ferrari at the time, was this front grille. And I really do love that as well. And now this one still has the hood that opens Correct. This way. Okay, out toward the front instead of the front open to the windshield. Wow, oh, this is really cool. Well, and so, then um, when I had, um, um, that was when I was still working, so I had to hire a lot of it out. Okay. But anyway, I went to my motor builder, and I said, I want to go completely through it like it's new. Right, right. And he said, <clears throat> and I said, when you're done with it, mm -hmm. I want a tick key. And he looks at me and he says, what's a tick key? Well, my dad's old beat up 59 wagon with that 283 in it. Right. It was so cool. You could get in there, tick, and, oh, and it was running. Okay, okay. And so now we've got this dialed in, and now it's a tick key. How about that? So you can just barely even think about it starting, and it's starting. Uh, and that's a feedback in the day because right. now you know you've got, you got analog ignition points, yep. um, plugs that you were supposed to replace every five to 10,000 miles. Right, On a right. car today, you don't even think of the plugs until you got 100,000. Right, and it's all electronics, it's a lot hotter fire, you don't have the points and the rotor and the condenser. And, and all that the stuff. The coil and everything else, it has to be exactly right for them to find. Then you've got the carburetor with the exact fuel and air mixture. Absolutely. All coming together, and it's just such a visceral feel and sound to these cars, and I think that's what makes them so different is because it is all still so mechanical. Now I took my honey out um, uh, last night, and we did a car cruise in the in the Corvette, oh. and um, it's just such a fun little buggy to ride in. Now they called them performance back then, but today you'd call it a slug. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Or a grand tour. That's now. right. It's fun on the highway. You get the sun in your the sun in your face, the wind in your hair, uh, but it's not a zoom zoom car. Well, but here's the funny deal. This is a one-wheel wonder. They didn't even they didn't even have positive traction back then. Oh sure. And now with, right. that little, right. with that little with that little BF Credridge Silvertown bias right. tire. Right. You've got and your treads. It, it, and <laughs> once in a while, and I don't like getting being mean on vehicles. Right. But every once in a while, when I'm in the mood, um, in first gear, I'll wind her up, and when when that cast iron two-speed um, uh, goes into gear, uh, second gear. A little squeak, chirp, squeak. Yeah. yeah, a little chirp. And you'll leave about what, that much or that oh, much? Oh no, you don't even leave anything. Well, you don't it even just, leave. <laughs> it just made a noise. <laughs> you know it was there, you know you spun the the wheel, because again, no positive traction. That's so, right. Well, tell me, what is your favorite thing about this car? What just makes you grin from ear to ear? I mean, think about, gosh, it's a 60 Corvette, come on. But other than that, I mean, just what is it that just makes you just feel alive when you sit behind the wheel and you tick and it's running? What is it? I'll tell you what, like I said earlier about the Hudson Terraplane Business Coupe, right. it's all about the lines. And I just love the lines, but you know, it's such a comfortable little car. Now there was no suspension, you know, coils in the front, leafs in the back, right, right. one wheel wonder, right. you know, all this and that. But it's not a, it's not a racing car. It's a sports car, and we put around town at 35, 40 miles an hour, and the old AM radio crackling away, right, right. and we just love it. 
Now we talked about when you pull up in your other cars, like your terror plane, you get the thumbs up and you said you're taking your mom for a drive in this before she passed away and you were at a crosswalk. And uh, well, tell us that story. I don't want to tell it. You tell us. Tell us well, that story again. Uh, my mom and I were very close and I bought this car and I asked her if she'd take a ride. No, I don't want to ride. And then I, mom, let's go for it. I don't want to ride. So finally one day um, um, before she took sick, she took a ride with me. And that day she took her sunglasses off and she put them in the glove department. Okay. And um, they're still in there today. Oh, how about that? But anyway, um, <clears throat> mom and I are uptown and we stopped for a traffic light. And there were people coming across the crosswalk and an old granny and a young kid were going across the crosswalk <laughs> and they both gave us a thumbs up like this and mom looked at me and she said, Oh, now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things you have to experience and she got to experience that. Yeah. You got to experience that with her. That's, and I'm glad she did. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, Be folks, yeah, that, well, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, and, um, you know, um, we didn't have much when we were growing up. Yeah. And Dad started the East Side Oil in 1963 when I was eight and my brother was four. Okay. And so, you know, we worked hard and everything like that. And then once we started coming up and enjoying some stuff, um, I went back to the to the vehicles that I loved. Because you know, when you were a kid, you oogled everything. Right, right. But right. you could have nothing. Right. Well, you said you think you were born a car guy, so uh, I think so. I, me too. I could. I, I when I was a kid, I would stand up in the front seat. And yes, you could do that back then. Yeah. Uh, and the '64, '65 Chevy that we had, and I always tell my kids we had 455 air conditioning. And there's like, what does that mean? It's like four windows down, yeah, 55, 55 miles an hour. Uh, but you know, I could point out the cars and say that's a Dodge, that's a Chrysler, that's a Buick, that's a Ford. But those are the things too that I'm drawn to again. And those are just like you and other car guys and gals they're all drawn to that because their memories of a, another time in their life uh, that just brings back such such really cool thoughts and absolutely and um, my dad was never a car guy um, and I don't think he paid over a hundred dollars for a family car all the while we were home <laughs> okay and um, they were cars that we were embarrassed of right right and now you'd give your IT for them I'm sure because everything slipped through the fingers if you think of all the stuff that was just destroyed because it went through a zero market, yeah. for example, porcelain signs. Yes. When I started my collection, they were free. Wow. And we know where they went now. Yeah, yeah. But I got them because I loved them. Right. And when I kept hauling gas pumps home, my dad would holler at me and he'd say, what do you want that junk for? And I said, because I like it. Yeah. And, you know, you were getting it for little or nothing. And now look what's it was utility him. for him it was nostalgia for you and now it's collectors exactly and my remember. dad um, was born in 25 so he remembers the depression right right so and it's a different time we were talking about this earlier your dad was curious as to why you were bringing all these things home because in that time everything that he touched had to make money so he could provide for his family absolutely you were able to it was a different time so now people started picking and choosing things were a little better economically but it was just a completely different time and his mindset wasn't at yours to where he could understand why you were doing such a thing well and um i tell friends this we never but once had a store-bought meal Really? There was three meals a day at home, and you couldn't go to a restaurant. We drive on a hot summer night. We drive by the A and W Red Beer stand. Yeah, yeah. You can't stop. We drive by the Dairy Queen. Can't stop. Yeah. And um, one day there was a big function at our house. I was probably seven, eight years old. Okay. And there was a. It was a special occasion, so we were going uptown to get Henry's hamburgers. Ooh. And so a college kid next door gave me a ride gave us a ride and we went down and we stood in that thing and it was all the neon and everything and I was just so mesmerized. You thought you were at Disneyland, didn't I you? I thought I did. <laughs> and so then I got my, I think it was a hamburger and a fry and then this college kid drove back to our house. He had a 62 Galaxy. I was going to ask you if you could remember the car. 62 Galaxy with a 390 and a 3 on the tree. Wow. And okay. he used to drive that car yep. and he'd shift that thing <laughs> and then if you noticed you could depress that horn button and okay. spin the horn ring off and he'd spin the horn ring off and he'd hand it over and he'd say here you drive <laughs> so I'm a little kid over there driving the car but anyway all of a sudden everybody got busy in our backyard 
and I'm sitting in the back seat of this Ford Galaxy, and I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, I'm looking, and everybody's laughing at me. And they said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just sitting there. Well, eat your burger before it gets cold. I said, no, I want to save it. <laughs> it means something completely different. And well, all those things come back to memory with the things that you collect now. That's what I mean. And that's it. And that's it. That's the cool part, folks. It's, it's a cool car. It's a pretty car. He's a cool guy. But it's a story that why you sought the vehicle, why what it means to you today, and how you came about getting the car, that's the really cool part. Jim, as always, sir, thank you for sharing that with us. Absolutely beautiful, folks. 1960 Chevrolet Corvette, and it's almost as cool as this guy is. And you and everybody is welcome at Idle Ridge. Thank you.